Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so hi, my name is Elise Tilson, and I teach in Denver, third grade teacher in Denver Public Schools. Um, a little bit of background about me. I graduated from Carson Newman with a master's in teaching degree in 2013. And from there, I moved to Colorado and taught elementary school, third grade and fifth grade for two years. Then I moved back to Tennessee, couldn't stay away from the South. Um, and I taught in Metro Nashville Public Schools for two years, second grade. And then my husband and I moved to Uganda um, and I worked with a very rural village school there um, on curriculum and mentoring teachers and helping them figure out resources, that type of thing um, with an organization called Love Does. And I was there for about six months and then moved back to the States and am now in Denver. And this is my second year um, at a HGTGT, which is highly gifted and talented, gifted and talented magnet school um, within Denver Public Schools. And I'm teaching third grade there now and absolutely love it. So about seven years total teaching experience since graduating. Cool. And so the HGTV, uh, how does that work? Like, how do they get identified and, and come in? Yeah. So it's an integrated school. So maybe 15% of the kids in my class are qualified, gifted, and talented. The rest are neighborhood students um, or students who have lotteried into the school because it's a very good school. Um, so we have a blended model to where I just differentiate the curriculum for the gifted and talented students, um, but they learn right alongside the rest of the classmates. And um, so the majority of students come from neighborhood zoning. Okay. Um, and uh, so one of the, one of the big issues um, that we had talked about before was working with students in the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. And you had a, a particular experience with a student that, um, I was wondering if you could kind of recount that um, because our students oftentimes kind of wonder and, and I've had students say things like, oh, well, I hope I just don't have to deal with that. Um, <laughs> so uh, maybe you could uh, share some of your experience and kind of the perspective that you brought to it as a Christian educator. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I can remember thinking some of those thoughts sitting in my master's program and just coming from the South and the Bible Belt and just, I didn't have any experience really with people that were much different than myself. Um, and that definitely changed once you um, get jobs out in the real world. And especially, I mean, clearly in Colorado, it's gonna be much different than Tennessee. Um, but I, my experience that you're referring to actually happened in Tennessee. Um, but before I share that, I just wanna say, I think getting into it and and understanding and learning about the students. Um, and really, as an educator, we all want to build those relationships with our students. That happens mm -hmm. naturally. And once you get to know people and realize the differences in families and cultures and religions that are always present in every classroom that you have, um, it, it changes you. And it really changes your perspective. And I feel for the better. Um, I definitely feel like I'm a much more well-rounded educator um, and person just from the people that I've gotten to know through teaching. But the story that you're referring to, when I um, moved to back to Nashville from Colorado, I was um, set to teach second grade in um, an inner city school where the majority of students were on free and reduced lunch um, and the majority were African-American or Hispanic. Um, I was kind of preparing myself for that demographic shift, having taught in Colorado where most kids were white. Um, and I got a call from my principal um, that summer and she just said, you know, I've just met with a family who um, are bringing in a second grader into our school who's not been here before. And they're very concerned about this child's transition into the school and they want to make sure that I place him with the very best teacher um, who's going to understand their family's needs, um, and their special circumstance. And I said, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about it? And they said, well, this child has just transi transitioned into, um, into a boy. Um, he was born a girl. He had lived up to six years old as a girl um, and all the time really expressing to his parents, I am a boy. I know I am a boy. And, um, and no matter what they said, and, and they did counseling as a family and they talked with him and he just absolutely was adamant that he was a boy. Um, and so they decided to honor his wishes and 
allow him to become transgender um, and to fully live out life as a boy. Um, mm. So he was coming into our school brand new as a boy mm. um, and had never experienced being around peers as a male before. And of course, they were very, very concerned. Um, and I listened to the story. I listened to, you know, my principal's concerns. And, and afterwards, I remember saying to her, give me that baby. I want that child in my classroom. Um, I know that I can give that child what he needs this year. And she said, are you sure? I mean, this is going to come with a lot. You're probably going to get a lot of pushback. There may be repercussions throughout the year if other families find out. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't care. You know, it's, it is about making this year exceptional for that child. And this is a make or break year. Um, and I was willfully admitted, I have never had a transgender student and for sure not one who was seven years old. You know, when you go into teaching, you never think this is going to be an issue for elementary school. You just don't. Yeah. Um, so he came into my class and I, you know, I remember thinking I never would have known that this child was a girl, like just presented completely as a boy, looked like a boy, acted like a boy. I just never would have known. And the students didn't know. Um, and I, you know, met with parents beforehand before school started to hear their concerns and to hear, you know, what would they like from me and how could I help make the transition easier, that type of thing. We had a great conversation. Um, and I remember the first day of school sitting in our little circle on the carpet and I asked all the students to share, um, you know, something about their summer, find somebody, find a new friend and share something about your summer that you did. Yeah. Um, and they all started busily talking and AJ was the child's name. AJ came up to me just with panic on his face and just said, Mrs. Tilson, I don't want to tell people about my change. And I said, Oh, sweetheart, no, no, no. You, you don't have to tell them about that. Tell them about going to the swimming pool, <laughs> you know, tell them about going on a family vacation. Like, but he was so nervous about it that that's, that's where his mind went of just like, we're supposed to share about our summer. Is this one I, I should, I, I don't want, you know? Yeah. And, and it was that I watched throughout the year of that type of just grippling anxiety. Um, just become more and more comfortable with who he is and himself. Um, and I continued lots of frequent emails with the parents and conferences with the parents to talk about how things were going and any concerns that they had. Um, students that year never found out, and he continued to go on in the same school, third grade, fourth grade. They transitioned to middle school and fifth grade. Um, and I have kept up with that family every year also. We are Facebook friends and keep up with the mom, and, um, and he's just done beautifully. And she recently emailed me and said, you know what, we were out to dinner. And this was, it's been, gosh, that's probably been three or four years. She said we were out to dinner with friends and our friends were asking, um, what was it that you felt was most impactful for AJ when he came out? Um, you know, what, what, was, what was a contributing factor that you feel like helped him make that transition really well? And she said, Elise, my husband and I both looked at each other. And we looked at these people in the eye and we said, his second grade teacher. <laughs> and she said, we will never forget how well you loved him and how well you helped him through that transition. And our family, we didn't know what to do. We'd never been through that before. Um, but having you as a teacher, you just, you were magical for him. Um, and of course, I mean, things like that are so impactful to me. Oh, but I think oh. about, you know, myself yeah. as an educator and I think that story will stick with me forever. That child will stay with me forever. But that experience and walking through that with a family changed me. It changed my view. Um, it changed what I really believed, you know, could or could not happen, you know, biblically. Um, it made me question all of that. And, you know, I still don't have answers to all of that. But what I came out of there saying is, you know, my default is going to be to love every child that God's, God puts in my class. And they're going to see and feel his love through me. And that is my goal for the year. It's not to make them feel judged or questioned or different. It's it, my job is to make them feel special and loved. Um, and that's the same for any child, you know, no matter what, what they are, what they're going through. So. <clears throat> yeah. How fulfilling to hear, hear that from the parents. Yeah. That's so was. nice. It was. Um, yeah, and I, when I hear that, that's what I, you know, you talk about. If you can pour out, you know, the love that that you have um, 
that's, I mean, that to me is the essence of being a Christian educator. And right. Yeah. Right. I, I remember sitting in Carson Newman classes and we, I mean, I feel like the professors at Carson Newman are so good at, you know, talking about your faith in the classroom and saying, you're going to come into, you know, circumstances where your faith is going to be in question. You're going to want to say something and you're going to wonder, can I say this? Can I not? That's happened a lot to me, you know? Um, and my default has, has always been, they are seeing Christ in me every day and I don't have to be preachy with them. I don't have to say, you know, I had a child tell the whole class once there's no such thing as God. And all the kids just turned and looked at me like, what's she going to say? You know, and there's so much pressure on me to respond correctly. And I don't know that I always do the right thing. But in that moment, I was like, you know what? You're going to find that in the world, there are some people that don't believe that there's God. You know, there people think differently. And I said, I believe there is God. I believe that God loves each one of you. But there might be others that don't think that. And, and that doesn't mean that we have to make them feel bad about what they believe or they think, you know, we just listen and understand why they think that. So who knows how much they catch? I mean, they're seven and eight years old, but, but yeah. I'm hopeful that they won't hear judgment from me or. Yeah. Yeah. What a, what a challenge to hear stuff like that. Like it's it, it, in my mind right now, I'm like preparing for the, like, there is no Santa Claus because my kids are, my oldest kid is in kindergarten and so I'm wondering like okay what do I do so that that's like this different level yeah. like in Knoxville I, I don't I think it's going to be a while hopefully before it hears there's no God right right, right. <laughs> you know, a little more time to prepare for that I've got like the, the baby steps uh-huh uh-huh okay about Santa Claus yeah, but the Santa thing comes up early because there's always one kid that like big brother, big sister has ruined it for them. And so they feel like they need to come in and tell everybody, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, um, all right, well, uh, I'm going to just pause the, the